Hey everybody, happy Fire Friday! Yes, we are going to be playing with fire tonight. Even though the world here in Texas is basically on fire, all you have to do is walk out the door and it kind of feels like you're going to combust. So that's super exciting. Um, we are doing our best sunshines to stay cool. Um, you know, it's, it's all about the hiding at this point in August. It's all about the hiding indoors and minimizing your exposure to the day star because it is awful out there. Fire pits. Tally Fit, are you talking about like parking lots, streets, everywhere right now? Like it's insane. All I have to say is thank goodness I have air conditioning again because that was not, not good. I just got tied and put them there in your need for right. Seriously, this is literally the time of year where in Texas, Arizona, California, you can bake a pan of cookies outside his fire pit. Right, Tally Fett? You are not wrong. Um, but yeah, you can literally fry an egg on the sidewalk, though considering, you know, the dirtiness of our sidewalks, I wouldn't want to eat it. And you can bake a pan of cookies on your dashboard. Yes, you really, really can. Oh, goodness. Okay, well, it's not, I mean, thankfully, it's not that bad as long as your sh shoes are moderately. I heard you were sending us stuff that you wanted me to open on stream. I was also not told what it was, that it was a surprise. So I can't wait. Super excited to get a box. Because I'm usually the one that sends the boxes, not gets the boxes. So yeah, so unboxing from Tally Fett whenever that gets here. And yeah, we've had a, we actually had a good day here at the Beating Dreams Money Wise, which was nice. We really, really, really needed that good sales day. Um, and thank you all so much for who, um, everyone who was on the sale last night. I know I was a little slow and chatty, but we still got through a, a tray of merchandise and that just means more for next time. So today for Fire Friday, we're doing actually one of my favorite projects that I have not repeated. So we're going to go ahead and do it again tonight. This is our engraved crocus pendant. Now let me just say for anybody out there who's a real trained metalsmith, I'm not a good engraver, okay? I'm not trained. I you know, basically just, just whack at metal with my graver. But even in my untrained state, you can make some really cool texture differentiations on metal with a graver, which are slightly different than say what you could make with a hammer. Um, so you can see all those little lines in the pendant. Those are actually done with this tool. So this tool is called a graver. Um, this is what you use for engraving, hence the name. Um, so this is just a really, really basic diamond shaped graver. And, um, I know that there's like crazy things you're supposed to do to sharpen it and stuff. I just bought mine from Rio years ago, stuck it in this handle and it's been in here ever since. So I use it for my, my little things. And at some point I will figure out how to sharpen it because I know it is getting a little dull. Maybe at some point I'll actually learn how to do fancy things with it. But right now straight lines are pretty much where I'm at with this. So um, let us, while we're talking about that, let's talk tools and supplies for this evening's tutorial. As far as supplies, you don't need a ton. You're gonna need some sterling silver sheet metal and I'm using 24 gauge sterling sheet. You are going to need a mouse. No, you don't need a mouse. But you're gonna need a bezel cup and a cabochon. So I'm gonna use this pretty little tiger eye for this evening's class. You are going to need some easy sterling silver solder and you're going to need, wow, my right ear just plugged itself up, but good. And um, you're gonna need two soldered rings that are four millimeter. You could also use four millimeter jump rings. Um, the only benefit to using soldered rings is it's kind of a cheat because seriously y'all, <laughs> completely plugged up. It's weird because it's doing that strange like audio thing in my head now. But anyway, um, soldered rings are a bit of a cheat because if you're using jump rings, um, you've got to make sure to put the open side down so that you're soldering closed while you're soldering it onto the piece. If you're using an already soldered ring, then um, you don't need to worry about it. Oh God. Okay. Maybe it's not just me then. Oh. Wow, right now it's like when you've been on a plane and your your ears won't pop and you just like hear your voice so loud inside your own head. It's it's unfortunate. 
So I know this shirt is not the best color for me, but today when I was getting dressed, I was like, nothing touchy this, nothing touchy than me. The less fabric touchy than me today, the happier I will be. So I'm wearing like these giant floofy linen pants, this like giant floofy linen shirt. I'm like, I don't even care that I look like a parachute. At least I'm not, you know, completely dying of heat stroke. Okay, so tools, you're gonna need your basic soldering setup. So that's torch soldering surface. Um, flux, pickle, pickle par pot. Um, oh, no, no, good vibes. I shall not, I refuse. I will not imagine leather in this heat. No, thank you. Yeah, it's, I don't, I don't understand what's up with the ears. This is, this is the, uh. This is new. This is the first time this has happened to me. Uh, so, soldering station. So, solder board, torch, flux, pickle pickle pot, or if you're just going to go to straight to tumbling, you can skip the pickling. Um, and then you're also going to need, in addition to your regular um, soldering uh, setup, you're going to need your graver. So, like I said, this is just a regular, regular diamond shaped graver. You are going to need a dapping block and dapping punches to go with it. You're going to need a prong pusher. You are going to need rubber cement. You're going to need your jeweler saw with a two-aught saw blade. Uh, you're going to need a bench pin for your jeweler saw, ideally extra saw blades because they tend to break. And probably a number of other tools. And oh, scribe. Definitely need to scribe. Also, need caffeine, BRB. Okay, I think I'm back. That was one of the internet blips that I was talking about that is caused because of, caused by the heat here in Texas because the wires, they stretch and they droop and then they um, don't connect as well. Also, now I have caffeinated beverage, so hopefully I will stop yawning soon and start making a little bit more sense. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and saw out our Crocus. So I don't think this is exactly the same pattern I used last time. But this is just a little flower that I printed out off of the internet. Um, I'm going to do a simplified version. So I just went over it in pen with the actual shape that I'm going to do. So my cut lines are just the outside of this pattern. And then these here are going to be my engraving lines. So one of the best ways that I know, so I'm going to take my bench pin. Ooh, new camera setup. No like you the movie. Okay, so I'm going to take my bench pin. Those are my super floofy uh, linen pants, by the way. Take my bench pin and I'm going to attach it onto my work surface. I mean, at this point, I'm about to switch to black for the whole summer just because it doesn't show sweat. You can be sweating your ass off and your ass won't look sweaty. So I'm really about to, about to go there. Okay, so I've got my bench pin. It's attached to my work surface. I've got my saw and my two aught saw blades. So I'm just gonna go ahead and load that in there. Remember you want to compress your saw blade or sorry, your saw frame, load your saw blade and then twist. Let go and you want to make sure like that. Ooh, tell me about kick. I have no idea. I mean, to be fair, I am shocked every time I get paid from Twitch. I'm like, oh yay, I made $20 in the past six months. That's awesome. Okay, so I've got my template and I've got my sewer. So the best way that I've ever learned to attach a template 
to silver for sawing is rubber cement because the rubber cement will come right off without leaving any goo or gook or residue. Residue would be the actual technical term for um, goo or gook. So it's not going to leave any residue on your on your piece. So I'm going to take my rubber cement and I want to thoroughly coat the back of my template, the whole thing. Now notice I didn't cut this out precisely. I cut it out, cut it out, goodness, I cut it out um, roughly and I'm just going to rubber cement the back of that. And then since this is sterling, I want to make sure that I'm maximizing my um, maximizing my silver use, meaning that I'm putting it as close to the edges of my silver as I possibly can. And then I'm just gonna burnish it down so that I'm sure that it's stuck well. Just gonna give it a quick check to make sure it didn't shift too much when I was burnishing it and that it's still fully on the silver. Like, you know, you wanna make sure that there's silver under all of the um, points. Interesting. Huh. I'll be interested to know how that goes. Okay, so I'm going to take my saw and. Oh, there, that's right. There's a box there. That's why I can't move over. Move over the box. So what's the viewership like on kick? I mean, like, what is, how do they, um, how, how do they do for viewership? How do they drive viewership? Okay, so now I'm gonna take my saw blade and I'm just gonna saw around the outside of this. So remember, when you're sawing, you wanna hold your saw gently. Don't hold it like you're gonna ax murder somebody with it, despite the fact that you might be feeling frustrated. You wanna hold it loosely, so two finger grip, these three fingers are only for control. Keep your saw blade vertical and worry about your saw blade going up and down. Don't try and push it forward because it will get stuck. Find a place close to the edge to start it. And then we're just gonna start going through the metal. Like really the key to sawing, it's a, it's a very kind of Taoist sort of art because the, the key to sawing is not trying to do anything except move your saw up and down. As long as you can do that, you're going to get nice, fast saw cuts. If you try too hard, you're going to get stuck, you're going to get nasty cuts, and it's not going to be fun, nor it, it, it will be neither fun nor pretty. I know, right? Wow. So good vibes. What is your brother going to be streaming? And when and where can we watch your brother? So this is 24 gauge, so it is really, really easy to cut. Um, theoretically, you could cut this with a shears, but you just can't quite get the kind of precision on like these corner turns with the shears that you can with a saw. Um, shears is nice for, you know, when you're in a hurry or when you don't have a saw available, but really, a saw is usually the better tool. So I'm running into a little bit of difficulty just because of the corners of my metal, so I'm just sort of having to manipulate those around my saw frame. So there's my piece that I sawed out. Put my silver to the side, since I swear I won't lose it. Well, hi, like good vibes, brother. Welcome to the Beating Dreams stream. We're so happy that you're here. 
we are we're sawing and playing with fire tonight okay so this is my this is my template piece and what i want to do is i want to grab my scribe and before i take this template piece off i'm just going to try and kind of press down and scribe my lines just lightly for my um for my graving and it's not going to be super precise because what it's really going to do is it's just going to kind of strip off the paper but i just want some kind of a guideline when i get out my graver um, visually for how I wanted this to be. So I'm just going to kind of scrub those down. All right, and then we can just peel this off. I know it looks fun and dangerous. Just you wait until the fire happens. Okay, so this is my that's my template piece. I've done my scribing. So now I just need to peel this paper off of here. So I don't have a, you know, I don't have a super detailed bunch of scribe lines, but I've got enough of kind of a basic map that I can go ahead and just um, sort of fill that in for myself now with my scribe. I just need some like hints to myself about where everything was going. Okay, so that's my basic, that's my basic scribe line of um, where I'm going to do my graving. So now I'm going to do my engraving. And let's see, let's go ahead and fix this camera, shall we? So that you can see things. I have to fix it again when I do the soldering, but autofocus on this camera has not been working very well lately, so... Stop being so, stop being so bright. It's very shiny silver. Okay, well, it looks like that's as good as we're gonna get at the moment. Sorry, it's so dang, hold on. I know how to make it stop shining. Turn down the lights. Oh, well, thank you. Well, we'll see if it works. Also, I have to find the light switch in this rat's nest of cords. There we go. Really didn't help that much, but okay. So this is my metal. You can see my, my scribe lines on there. I really, really, really wish my focus would work better so you could see better. And it won't zoom. Zoom out, zoom in. That's as far as it wants to zoom in. Okay then. Alright. I swear, cameras might just not give us a lot of good look. I really don't. Seriously, do not. Like, what the hell? Where, where is it? Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that really is as good as we're going to get. Sorry. Okay, so now I'm going to take my graver. So my graver has a pointy bit. It's right there. And it's got a flat part here. So the flat part goes up. And the pointy bit is what's going to scratch against the metal and make my graving lines. Now, working with a graver is kind of like working with a saw and that you don't want to press hard with your graver. Also, I'm going to grab a little bit. Um, a little bit of lubricant for my graver. So this is just a solid, um, this is just a solid lubricant that you would use for drill bits and such. So I'm just gonna um, lubricate my graver up a bit, so just lube it up there. 
to make that kind of petal effect for my crocus. So light touch, I'm kidding you not. The lighter your touches, the more control you'll actually have. So see, that's what I've got so far. So once I've finished one half, I'm gonna go the other half because I want these lines to be coming in together. problem. So like I said, I'm not super great with the graver, but I do like how I can use it to add texture to metal in a very kind of precise way. Um, and I also love that it makes texture, um, like a texture you can feel. Because what the graver does is it takes metal off. So you're actually making little like cuts in your wood or in your um, metal. Yeah, exactly, Corvus, you are completely correct. So that's one of my crocus petals. So I'm gonna do the other four. And I'm gonna take my glasses off so don't say anything mean about me while I can't read the chat. No, no being mean behind Allison's face. Fun. In front of Allison's face while she's blind and can't see things. Hey, good vibes, what Legos have you done recently? And then if you want, you can go back in and kind of deepen the lines that sort of set that petal off from the rest of your flower. I just put my glasses back on so I can see. Okay, so that's two. Um, it's, I mean, it's also like linoleum engraving, honestly. Like, you know, anything where you, you take off metal in order to create texture or take off any material in order to create texture um, is like this. Um, so I do find that I personally, if I'm doing curves, I'm best doing them right to left. So what you can actually do is you can turn your piece around so that you're working in your in your best direction for your curves. All right, and that's, so that's three. So one more to go.
Okay, so there's my four engraved petals. This is a special one for metal engraving Corvus. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to dap this. So I'm just going to get this up here. Maybe I'll go. A whole lot of room to spin the thingy. Um, but yeah, there and there's also there are actually Corvus a, a ton of different shapes and sizes of gravers. Okay, Tatty Fett. Um, so when you're you know really good at this, you can actually get extremely precise about what tools you actually need to accomplish the job. Okay, so now we're gonna dab this, and we're gonna see if we can get a little bit of a better focus on the dapping. And with the saw, when you're storing your saw, you want to release the tension on it. Just somewhere where it's not going to just kind of roll into your streaming area. And uh, let's see. So now we're going to dab. Lori, how are you? Ooh, that's way too bright. I'm going to stick with that. All right, so now we're gonna dap this. So we wanna dap it with the texture on the inside. So I'm gonna grab my dapping block. How fun. Ooh, yay. That does sound fun. All right, I'm gonna find the smallest depression that my piece will drop into. So you can get a much better look at my engraving there. So this one's actually too small, so I need to go one bigger, which is gonna be this one. So I'm gonna drop that in there, and once again, I'm gonna make this concave so you know I want the texture on the top if I would make it convex I'd want the texture on the bottom now I'm gonna find the dapping punch that goes with that depression and that's gonna just be the biggest one in my set I'm gonna grab a hammer and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my dapping punch I'm just gonna put it down on my object like so so kind of like I was going to grind it in a mortar and pestle. And then we're going to just gently tap on our dapping punch. And what that's going to do pretty quickly is it's going to form our item into a little dish. Now, if you wanted to continue your dishing and make it a little bit more extreme, you could then drop it in the next size and go at that with the appropriate size dapping punch and dish it a little bit more. But you don't have to. Okay, so that's my little dished flower pendant piece. Now I'm going to take a moment and put away my dapping punches. So um, this is going to take a second because I took them somewhere and they fell everywhere and they've been driving me crazy ever since. So let's see, tomorrow night is Social Saturday. It is going to be a free form. Social Saturday, I have no clue what I'm going to be doing. Probably whatever project is most on fire is what I will be doing tomorrow night. Um, and then we're dark until Wednesday. I am working on classes for next week. And by working on, I mean I will be working on them tomorrow. Gelato containers are great for dapping punches, but you do have to like fill it up kind of a bit like Tetris, otherwise the dapping punches, they all fall down. No good. So Lori, what kind of gaming did you do? Did you do like tabletop gaming or board gaming or all of the above? Okay, thank you for your patience. Now my dapping punches are all back in place. 
right, now it's time to bust out the soldering stuff. So, actually, before we bust out the soldering stuff, let's talk about prep work. So, I have really been um, kind of trying to get better at prep work because it, uh, it really makes a huge difference. And I've said this before, it makes a giant difference in how easy your soldering process is if you properly prepare. So for this pendant, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna solder two loops, one on either side of one of the, the edges of the petals. And that's going to allow for me to have a chain to go through both loops. And um, the two loop construction is gonna make it so that my um, piece is less likely to shift. So I'm gonna, figure out do I want and I think I want a ooh, I think I want a non engraved point at the top so I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to scribe two marks where I want my loops to be so I'm going to want one and I want to pick one that's kind of symmetrical I think this one's actually better so I'm going to want one here and one there Okay, so there are my two scribe marks, you can see. Now, I'm gonna grab my Dremel and I'm going to grab a ball burr, a tiny little ball burr. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grind a little seat for my jump rings, or soldered rings in this case. Because, once again, the more contact you have when you're soldering, the better your soldering, your solder joint is going to be. And so if you just try and solder the jump ring onto the back of this, which I believe is what I did the last time I taught this tutorial, it's probably gonna work, but it's not gonna be nearly as secure as if you make it a little place to rest. So I've got my ball burr and I'm gonna turn on my Dremel. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find my scribe mark and I'm just going to etch a little divot Don't go too deep because you don't want to go through the metal, but you're just creating a little place for that ring to rest. And then same on the other side, you want to make sure that they're kind of at the same height. Okay, so there are my two little divots. So once again, this is something that's just going to make A, your soldering easier and be your soldering more secure in the long run. Because once again, the more contact you have, the sturdier your solder joint is going to be. So now we're going to go ahead and set this up. Also, I was doing an audio tutorial the other day and I realized that I say we're going to go ahead and do this a lot. So I'm going to try and change that a little bit because I feel like it gets uh, repetitive and annoying. Okay, so this is my soldering surface. And we're gonna go ahead, <laughs> see? it's That should become a drink because that's what will make me break that habit. Um, yes, yeah, because every time we make something a drink, it, it's over. It's yeah, over. so yes, I that needs to go away. Needs to go away forever. Because it's, I feel like it's annoying. Dee -dee -dee. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead really see now I can't stop hearing myself say it it literally won't focus with the what right. So there are my two little divots. I will be under the table quickly if that's a drink. Well. <laughs> True. Everyone is just going to have to take one for the team while I work on getting that out of my 
tutorial mode speaking. So before I do my rings, and somehow, Keiko, if you're here, I've already lost one. Once again, even though I didn't do anything with them, but before my rings, I'm actually going to do my center. And the cool thing about this is the center will, will pretty easily solder in the direct center because gravity. So I've got my bezel cup. Oh, there's my other, yay, I found my other ring. So I have my bezel cup here and I'm going to grab out my flux and also my torch because I'm going to be needing that in a moment. So torch, flux, come here flux, and nasty paintbrush with which to apply the flux. So I want to flux the center of my flower and I want to flux the back of my bezel cup and I'm going to do this whole thing with easy solder. Now I could do this center part with medium and the rings with easy but I don't think that's going to be necessary. So I'm just going to take a chip of easy solder. I'm going to figure out where the actual heck I have some kind of cutting implement. Nope. Be right back. Okay, so I'm just going to cut a wee bitty tiny chip of solder. And I'm going to place that on the back of my basil cup. And you can see I spectacularly missed. That was not even close to getting onto my bezel cup. So that is why we have tweezers. So I'm gonna take my tweezers, I'm just gonna move that over onto my bezel cup. And then I'm going to take my torch and heat this. And I'm gonna move my um, flower to the side for a moment because I don't really need that right now. So I'm gonna heat this bezel cup. I'm gonna sweat my solder onto the back of it. So what that means is I'm going to take my heat and take my flame and I'm going to heat this all up until my solder balls up and then flattens out. That's called sweating the solder onto your metal and it's a way to invisibly join two pieces that are going to be flat surface to flat surface. So I'm going to light my torch and I'm going to just sneak up on this. If you just hit it full bore with the flame right away, see even though I was being cautious I still, my solder just kind of snuck down the side and that's not what you want. You want it on the back. If it's on the side, it's going to flow on the side. That's not going to be helpful. Okay, there we go. Wham, bam, done. Solder flowed. Good to go. Ooh, that's almost arrived. Now I'm going to take my flower part and I'm going to set this in the middle. Make sure that it's relatively level. And my flower part isn't hot right now, so I can grab it, but as always, be very careful grabbing metal with your bare hands because even if you haven't had a torch on it, if it's been sitting anywhere near the torch or if it's, in, it's been sitting on a solder board that's hot, you have a really good chance of burning yourself. Okay, so once again, we're going to sneak up on this. We want to try and keep it centered, and it's going to start to kind of jig around there. So once your, once your flux burns away, this is when we're getting down to the nitty gritty. And you just want to heat this. And what you're going to see is you're just going to kind of see your piece settle down. And there you go. So that is my soldered flower. Now I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to solder those rings. So I could set these up in a third hand if I wanted to. I'm just going to hold them in my tweezers. That can be a questionable decision, so please feel free to use a third hand if you want to, because it really is the smarter of the two options. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just flux that whole area. And I want to make sure that I got a little bit of flux on my jumps as well, or my solder, so I'm just going to kind of take them and sort of, I rub them on my flux. Because um, I use a paste flux, so my flux is in this like big jar of pasty stuff. 
Uh, you, there also are liquid fluxes that you can use. Um, so don't feel like you have to use the paste just because it's what I use. It's just what I prefer. So I'm trying to find my, my two divots. Where in the world? Fun game. Find the divot. Okay, I think that I think that those are they. If not, those are they now. So make sure you flux. And we're gonna grab just a tiny, tiny piece of our easy solder. Literally just the tip of the of the wire that I cut off there. And I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna set that on my little divot. And I'm gonna grab my ring and my tweezers. And you can turn your board to whatever angle is comfortable for you. And you're just going to set that there. And turn on your torch. Oh, maybe my igniter on this one is having issues. So you've got your solder there. I've got my little divot that I can see much better. I kind of can feel my my ring sort of click into that little spot. And then I just want to make sure that I'm heating my flower so that my solder doesn't just flow onto my ring, but also flows down and bonds my ring to my flower. Because the flower is a bigger piece of metal and so it's going to take up heat more slowly than your ring so you want to be really careful that you don't melt your ring. Now theoretically I have two of these. There's the second one. So I'm going to do another piece of solder. Another tiny piece of solder. Okay you don't want a ton on there. And if you're having trouble getting it to stick you can always dab just a little bit of extra flux on there, but I'm going to just set it about where that second divot is going to be. And I'm going to take my, once again, my soldered ring and my tweezers. I'm going to start my torch. And we're going to do this again. So we're going to heat. And I want to make sure that flower part is nice and hot. And I'm just going to grab it with our ring, get in that divot, let our solder flow, and just make sure that it bonded everything together, which it did. So, ta da! We soldered it all together. Yay, us. Now, what did else in the glasses? There they are. So fairly simple as far as the soldering goes, um, just, you know, a bezel cup and two rings. Um, but here we go. So at this point, you would then take this and pop it into the pickle. But if, like me, you are going to tumble this, you can actually skip the pickling portion of it and go straight to tumbling. Now, if you are tumbling, or sorry, if you are using a stone that is delicate, or really, if you're using a stone at all, the recommendation is not to tumble your piece with the stone intact. However, in order to finish this tutorial within the time, oh, that's really hot. Yes, I should have known that. In order to finish this tutorial within the time allotted, we are gonna go ahead and set our stone now and then throw it in the tumbler after.
Yes, you can all say I told you so. You can all say I told me so, because I did. Okay, so now I'm going to grab, oh lordy, where is it? Come on. I'm going to grab my steel bench block, I think. And I'm going to put this on here to cool for a minute before I do anything else, because, ow. <clears throat> Fun times. Alright, and then I'm going to grab my prong pusher, which looks similar to my graver, but is not the same tool. Okay, this one's flat on the end, whereas my graver is um, diamond shaped and sharp on the end. So I'm just going to take my stone. If I were at all unclear about whether my stone would fit or not, what I would do, I would, I know, right, Corvus, now she tells me, is I would put a piece of dental floss across this and then pop my stone in. That way, if it's not a good fit, if it lines up crooked, I can pop it out fairly easily. But I am 100% sure that this stone is going to fit in here, so I'm just going to drop my tiger eye in to my setting. Make sure it goes in there flat and all the way. <laughs> I know, Corvus. Do as I say, not as I do. That's all I got. So this one is, um, it's just not quite going in level like I would like it to. Um, let's see if I can show you. It's not, it's on one side, it's not really sitting in there. So I'm just going to kind of try and coax it a bit with the nylon jaw pliers. Now, you know, how successful this is, it's going to really depend on your stone and how sturdy your stone is. Like, don't ever try that with an opal or an aptite or a tanzanite or anything like that, but um, my tiger eye went in pretty nicely, so now it's nice and level. And then I'm just gonna take my prong pusher, and it's a little difficult because it's at an, it's not a flat piece, but I'm just gonna take my prong pusher, and what I wanna do is just lay this bezel over my stone. So the goal is in and down so that the bezel hugs the stone. This is going to take a little bit of el elbow grease because you're taking a piece of metal that is straight and you're convincing it that it wants to be curved. You're essentially stretching the metal over the stone. So, you know, be patient because it's going to take a little bit of work. Okay, another internet blip, sorry about that. Also, speaking of internet blips, by the way, those of you who were on the sale last night, um, we did not get to a live recap because the internet just at the end of the sale, it just kept glitching and glitching and glitching. So there is a link on Discord to the recap of last night's sale. Um, oh, good, yay! Okay, so there we go. So this, all this blue, this is what happens to your flux when it takes up heat. Um, that's just the chemicals doing their job. So now I'm just going to take this whole thing, I'm going to put it in the tumbler, and it's going to clean everything off. It's going to clean off all the flux grossness. It's going to clean off all the fire scale. It's going to turn off, clean off all the yuck in the back. And I'm going to wind off with a really pretty polished piece. Also, what the tumbler is going to do for me is it's going to take off all the burrs from the sawing as well. So I don't really need to worry about sanding around the edge of this piece. Um, if you're not going to tumble, then what you would do is you would pickle this before you put the stone in it. You would polish it with steel wool. You could even shine it up more with a rotary tool and a felt buff, and then you would set the stone. So that's it. That's our engraved crocus pendant. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. 
So thank you so much for joining us for Fire Friday. Again, sorry about the internet blips. It's just the heat. There's nothing we can do about it. But we will be back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream tomorrow with a free form Saturday tutorial um, where I'm going to be chatting and doing something from start to finish. Again, not quite sure what, but whatever it is, it's going to be fun, I hope. So everyone have a good night and I'll see y'all back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream tomorrow at 6 p.m. Also, I still don't have an outro screen, so you get to see the buttonless Corvus designed graphic. Bye y'all.